Researchers have developed a technique that enables a robot to learn a new pick-and-place task with only a handful of human demonstrations. Imagine a warehouse with e-commerce orders pouring in, which has a robot that picks mugs off a shelf and then places them into boxes for shipping. Everything would be working just fine until the warehouse processes a change and the robot must now grasp a taller, narrower mug that is stored upside down, for instance. Reprogramming that robot involves hand-labeling thousands of images that show it how to grasp these new mugs in order to train the system all over again. But a new technique developed by MIT researchers would require only a handful of human demonstrations to reprogram the robot. This machine learning method enables a robot to pick up and place never-before-seen objects that are in random poses that it has never encountered. Within just 10 to 15 minutes, the robot would be ready to perform a new pick-and-place task. The technique uses a neural network specifically designed to reconstruct the shapes of 3D objects. With just a few demonstrations, the system uses what the neural network has learned about the 3D geometry to grasp new objects that are similar to those in the demos. In simulations and using a real robotic arm, the researchers show that their system can effectively manipulate never-before-seen mugs, bowls, and bottles arranged in random poses using only 10 demonstrations to teach the robot. The major contribution is the general ability to much more efficiently provide new skills to robots that need to operate in more unstructured environments where there could be a lot of variability. The concept of generalization by construction is a fascinating capability because this problem is typically so much harder. A robot may be trained to pick up a specific item, but if that object is lying on its side, the robot sees this as a completely new scenario. This is one of the reasons why it's so hard for machine learning systems to generalize to new object orientations. To overcome this challenge, the researchers created a new type of neural network model, a neural descriptor field, or NDF, that learns the 3D geometry of a class of items. The model computes the geometric representation for that specific item using a 3D point cloud, which is a set of data points or coordinates in three dimensions. The data points can be obtained from a depth camera that provides information on the distance between the object and a viewpoint. Because the network was trained in simulation on a large data set of synthetic 3D shapes, it can be directly applied to objects in the real world. The team designed the neural descriptor field with a property known as equivariance. With this property, if the model is shown an image of an upright mug and then shown an image of the same mug on its side, it understands that the second mug is the same object as the first, just rotated. This equivariance is what allows them to much more effectively handle cases where the object they observe is in some arbitrary orientation. As the NDF learns to reconstruct shapes of similar objects, it also learns to associate related parts of those objects. For instance, it learns that the handles of the mugs are similar, even if the mugs are taller or wider than others, or have smaller or longer handles. The researchers use this trained NDF model to teach a robot a new skill with only a few physical examples. They move the hand of the robot onto the part of an object they want it to grip, like the rim of the bowl or the handle of the mug, and record the locations of the fingertips. Because the NDF has learned so much about 3D geometry and how to reconstruct shapes, it can infer the structure of a new shape, which enables the system to transfer the demonstrations to new objects in arbitrary poses. Their method had a success rate of 85% on pick-and-place tasks with new objects in new orientations, while the best baseline was only able to achieve a success rate of 45%. Google DeepMind's Breakthrough Flamingo shows promising work with their multimodal general purpose model, which can do visual identification but also engage in dialogue, not because it's two models in one, but because it marries language and visual understanding together. This kind of multimodal approach produces good results as it tackles multiple tasks with a single visual language model. One key aspect of intelligence is the ability to quickly learn how to perform a new task when given a brief instruction. For instance, a child may recognize real animals at the zoo after seeing a few pictures of the animal in a book despite differences between the two. But for a typical visual model to learn a new task, it must be trained on tens of thousands of examples specifically labeled for that task. If the goal is to count and identify animals in an image, as in three zebras, one would have to collect thousands of images and annotate each image with their quantity and species. This process is inefficient, expensive, and resource intensive, requiring large amounts of annotated data and the need to train a new model each time it's confronted with a new task. As part of Google DeepMind's mission to solve intelligence, they've explored whether an alternative model could make this process easier and more efficient given only limited task-specific information. Introducing Flamingo, a single visual language model that sets a new state-of-the-art in few-shot learning on a wide range of open-ended multimodal tasks. This means Flamingo can tackle a number of difficult problems with just a handful of task-specific examples without any additional training required. 
Flamingo's simple interface makes it possible, taking as input a prompt consisting of interleaved images, videos, and text, and then output associated language. Similar to the behavior of large language models, which can address a large language task by processing examples of the task in their text prompt, Flamingo's visual and text interface can steer the model towards solving a multimodal task. Given a few example pairs of visual inputs and expected text responses composed in Flamingo's prompt, the model can be asked a question with a new image or video and then generate an answer. For instance, given the two examples of animal pictures and a text identifying their name and a comment about where they can be found, Flamingo can mimic this style given a new image to output a relevant description. For instance, this is a flamingo. They are found in the Caribbean. On the 16 tasks that were studied, Flamingo beats all previous few-shot learning approaches when given as few as four examples per task. In several cases, the same Flamingo model outperforms methods that are fine-tuned and optimized for each task independently and use multiple orders of magnitude more task-specific data. This should allow non-expert people to quickly and easily use accurate visual language models on new tasks at hand. In practice, Flamingo fuses large language models with powerful visual representations, each separately pre-trained and frozen, by adding novel architecture components in between. Then, it is trained on a mixture of complementary large-scale multimodal data coming only from the web without using any data annotated for machine learning purposes. Following this method, they start from Chinchilla, the recently introduced compute-optimal 70 billion parameter large language model, to train the final Flamingo model, an 80 billion parameter visual language model. After this training is done, Flamingo can be directly adapted to vision tasks via simple few-shot learning without any additional task-specific tuning. They also tested the model's qualitative capabilities beyond their current benchmarks. As part of this process, they compared their model's performance when captioning images related to gender and skin color, and ran their model's generated captions through Google's Perspective API, which evaluates toxicity of text. While the initial results were positive, more research towards evaluating ethical risks in multimodal systems is crucial, and they urge people to evaluate and consider these issues carefully before thinking of deploying such a system in the real world. Multimodal capabilities are essential for important AI applications, such as aiding the visually impaired with everyday visual challenges or improving the identification of hateful content on the web. Flamingo makes it possible to efficiently adapt to these examples and other tasks on the fly without modifying the model. Interestingly, the model demonstrates out-of-the-box multimodal dialogue capabilities, as seen here. Flamingo is an effective and efficient general-purpose family of models that can be applied to image and video understanding tasks with minimal task-specific examples. Models like Flamingo hold great promise to benefit society in practical ways, and they're continuing to improve their flexibility and capabilities so they can be safely deployed for everyone's benefit. Flamingo's abilities pave the way towards rich interactions with learned visual language models that can enable better interpretability and exciting new applications, like a visual assistant which helps people in everyday life, and researchers at Google DeepMind are delighted by the results so far.